Welcome to Louisiana Business Spotlight. I'm Jeff Carrere. A great program lined up for you today. We're going to delve into what happened up in Baton Rouge. The special session is over and now we're going to look at what happened. We're going to visit with a senator, Danny Martini, and a representative, Kirk Talbot. Both of them represent us right here in Jefferson Parish and should be a great discussion. But let's start with some of the top business stories we're following right here on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Negotiations to create a new $100 million center for treating cancer. These are patients uh, that are helped using proton beam therapy. It's going to be at the University Medical Center campus in New Orleans. Those talks have collapsed, seemingly undercut in part by the state's many budget woes a year after the ambitious plans were unveiled. Despite the setback, the company behind the proposal says it remains optimistic about moving forward with its plans elsewhere in the city. Certainly hope that does happen. Louisiana personal income grew by 3.6%. Now that was in the first quarter of the year. It's according to the U.S. Department of Commerce. That might seem good, but it lags behind the rate of growth in both the U.S. and the Southeast region. The growth in Louisiana ranked 43rd in the U.S. overall. The state added around $1.8 billion in earnings over the period. Plans to resume passenger train service uh, on the northern Gulf Coast for the first time since Hurricane Katrina did suffer a setback recently. Both Alabama and Mississippi refused money for the project. Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi had to pledge around $35 million total for three years to be eligible for the same amount in federal funds that would enable Amtrak trains to run from New Orleans eastward to Mobile, Alabama. Advocates say they're going to try to revisit that later. And the New Orleans City Council is looking for ways to limit the number of discount stores in the city or else require them to offer fresh produce. Some council members uh, warn that uh, these small box uh, discount stores like Dollar General and Family Dollar chains may be crowding out grocery stores with a healthier selection of food. The council voted six to zero to have the city planning commission study city regulations governing those stores. Okay, coming up next is going to be State Senator Danny Martini. Let's take a look at what happened up in Baton Rouge and where things go from here as far as the state of Louisiana. That's next right here on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Very pleased to have with us a state senator who represents a large part of Jefferson Parish, Kenner, Metairie. And of course, he's been in the legislature and just finished quite a uh, year of uh, <laughs> sessions. Uh, State Senator Danny Martini is with us. And Senator, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, have you ever had a year like this? Never. Most frustrating term that I have ever spent. Because we, you know, to me, I guess it's because I, I started off, when I started off, I was the lowest ranking Republican where, and we were a significant minority. So you had to learn how to get along with people if you wanted to get anything done. And, it, and what I see has happened is we're really, and, and I shouldn't say this because I guess I'm the chairman of the Senate Republican delegation, but we're, we've become so partisan, not so much the Senate, but they're gonna get there next term that uh, sometimes you get, it's kind of like D.C., you kind of get paralyzed doing it. So. And the Louisiana legislature always historically had a sort of reputation of being nonpartisan, right? Well, I've, I've always said that issues don't drive the Louisiana legislature, people drive it. And if you don't understand the people you're dealing with, you're not going to get anywhere. And, mm -hmm. I, and I feel like I've been pretty successful mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in watching people and understanding what, where they come from. Because, you know, we've got so many varied uh, mindsets coming from all over the state. So you just can't say, this is what Danny Martini believes in and everybody else is wrong. So you have to understand that and you have to learn that there's, you know, you may not like the way you're treated on one bill, but you, you've got another one coming down the road, so you better right. be prepared. Uh, one of your colleagues was on my radio program uh, talking about um, the fact that uh, the budget has grown uh, mm -hmm. over the years. Uh, our U.S. Senator was on my program talking about how since Katrina the budget has grown, mm -hmm. yet um, the governor said recently that he believes, you know, he's cut as much as he can cut. Well, he, so, so what really is the, the well, situation? Just because the budget has grown and we've made, we, ha we can make significant cuts and we have made significant cuts, but I think health care and higher ed have just gotten 
you know, it, it costs more money. I mean, it, is it know. true that you legislators cannot cut other areas of the budget that you're sort of limited to health care? Well, it, it's not ed. that we can't cut other areas, but where you where you can make the most significant cuts uh, under our constitution are higher ed and health care, and it's a shame. Uh, because nobody, you know, you'd love you love to do it like you do it at your house. You just kind of everybody takes a haircut. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, with the Constitution the way it is, a lot of this stuff is dedicated and can't be touched. Now there was an effort to try to uh, organize another Constitution. Yes, I know. In fact, it's funny. I just gave a presentation with Bubba Henry down at the Bar Convention about it, and uh, it, I think, it, given the the nature of politics in the state right now. It's not going to happen because not only do you have to get people to agree to have the convention, you have to get them to agree what issues are going to be there. Mm. You know, you can't just say, oh, we want to just take, do the fiscal stuff. You can say that, but then you have to get the votes. Then it costs a fortune to have the convention. Right. Uh, you can't have it in the, uh, the last one we had. You can't have it in the Capitol because it's, right. it's too big uh, and we don't have any money. You know, so, uh, I mean, it's a great idea. And I'm sure there's 144 people that have their own ideas how they change the Constitution. But uh, it's not going to happen. I don't think it happens in my lifetime. Now, if it becomes, you know, t totally Republican or totally Democrat, you might have a shot. The problem is, uh, back in, in, in 73, you know, it, the Republicans were just kind of a blip on the screen. Right. So, you, you know, the, the fights were among Democrats. Right. Well, now it's now it's we we are becoming more and more like D.C. and I don't like it. I think in right. fact to that extent I'm probably a dinosaur because I you, if you work across party lines they call you a rhino, but you got to get something done. So it's interesting though because Louisiana is the only southern state with a Democrat governor, mm -hmm. and you have a Republican-led legislature. So mm -hmm. really, to get anything done, you do have to have bipartisan cooperation because of the dynamics in Louisiana. And we finally did after. A year and a half. So let's go through that because okay. obviously we've been hearing about the fiscal cliff ad nauseum, the mm -hmm. fiscal cliff. First it was going to be a billion and change, then it was down to 600 mm -hmm. million and change. Mm -hmm. And we went through all these sessions to try to deal with it and we, we couldn't get it done. So what finally cracked and we were able to get it done? Well, I just think, you know, you know, you can play all the partisan and political games you want. At the end of the day, the people want us to do our job. And you know, you know, we fight. Look, I get up there and fight for what I believe in. But when it gets to the point where I say, you know what, we just got to do something. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, th I think we wasted a tremendous amount of time up there. We could have done this early this year. But what happens is, and, and I'll, I'm not going to say there's, that it's everyone, but there's a group of people up there that remind me very much of, of D.C. and that they're just still mad as to who won the governor's race. It's just like they do with Trump. And I, you watch TV every night. Some, if Trump says X, the other, the other side says Y. And um, there have been legislators who have publicly said, we'll never give the governor enough money to be successful. You know, <clears throat> I'm not one of them. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I don't, I, I like the man. I think he's an honest guy. Uh, you know, I don't agree with him on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. He's a lot more liberal than I. But when you're a Republican majority, mm -hmm. my attitude is you don't stop him for doing what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. You do positive things from your perspective mm -hmm. and put him on his desk and make him veto him. And, you, know, you know, we've been up here, this is like the seventh special session we've had, and this is the first time that ended, that ended uh, amicably, amicably. Right? Well, not, not, amic well, we got our job done. Right. And you know, so many times you're sitting there and all of a sudden it's the end of the day, you say, These, they can't possibly, I mean, and not, like I'm not blaming the House, I, they, they believe in one, but the, the Senate, uh, since it was fiscal, mm -hmm. We're at their mercy. If they don't send revenue bills or right. stuff over to us, we can't. We can't do it. If they don't send the budget over, mm -hmm. or they don't like this time. If they didn't send the sales tax, and you know, you had the Black Caucus that didn't want sales tax. They wanted, they they wanted to combine. They wanted to condense some of the income tax brackets and all. So just to go over what happened, we we uh, were uh, the sales tax renewal was coming to an end. Yes. We put a penny on two years ago. That's correct. So J June 30th was the deadline. Yes. July 1st is the new fiscal year, right? Yes. So the idea was how much of that penny are we going to renew? And the compromise at the end was 0.45 cents, right? No, point. 0.45 of a yeah. penny. 
point four four five. Four four five. Okay. Right, because because the governor agreed on point four five, so they had they went down to point four four five, and 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 that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. But we didn't really have. We could have we could have done nothing, because we did in fact pass a budget earlier. Mm -hmm. We just didn't pass the funds to fund it. So the government wasn't going to stop on July the first. Mm -hmm. But it's you know it's kind of like when you get if you get fired and you got and they pay you six months or mm -hmm. they let you go and they give you six right. months severance pay, you have no immediate problem. Mm -hmm. but, you, but 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 you know but the close you know and you know there's an election year coming around so right. a lot of people are saying we need to get this done and we so did. So the solution <laughs> was a good solution. The solution was the best opportunity we had to do it. Mm -hmm. There was another bill that that they had proposed uh, that was by Representative Bishop out of Lafayette. Uh, which would have probably cost the taxpayers about a half a billion dollars less, and uh, for some reason, and I, I don't know why, but uh, couldn't get done. No, they pulled the bill. They, we, we kind of agreed, hey, this is a good bill, and they said, oh, we y'all like it, we don't. They, so. so, how do you uh, uh, finish that last little part? Because I think there was a six hundred million dollar uh, deficit plus and change. This brought mm -hmm. in about five hundred million. So are there some cuts that are going to happen? Um, yeah, there, there were cuts. Uh, we also had some, I think they, they took money from the BP settlement, and there was, I think we had some. Uh, you couldn't take it from the rainy day fund, right? Mm, I, think we, I think we might have taken a little from that. I'm not okay. sure about that. I do know that we have revenue estimating conference coming up, mm -hmm. coming up uh, tomorrow, but, uh, that, that, but we, couldn't, we couldn't use those funds. What we ended up doing, though, is there was $42 million that we call below the line, which was in the budget but not funded. Mm -hmm. And we were able to work out a deal where that would be a contingent appropriation subject to REC recognizing uh, money. And if right. they do recognize money, it would then go to, the, uh, uh, to our joint legislative committee on the budget, and we would figure out where that money would go as to those priorities. Right. But TOPS is fully funded, higher ed is fully funded, and healthcare is fully funded, is that right? Yes. So I, I know there's a lot of concern about University Medical Center, a lot of parents yeah. were concerned about TOPS. Well, the, the, a lot, a lot of, of the teaching were hospitals concerned. were having trouble. Mm -hmm. And the problem you had is it's very easy to say, oh, we had time to do it. Right. But if you're a college professor and you're getting ready to sign a contract for mm -hmm. next year, you're not going to say, you know, you're gonna say right. well, I can, I can go to the University of Alabama, mm -hmm. I don't want to, but, and mm -hmm. make X number of dollars and, and it's guaranteed. Right. And you're telling me, hey, if we get the money, we mm -hmm. can probably pay you through, you know, through six months from now, whatever. Senator, we only have about a minute or so. So do sure. we need some kind of fiscal reform whereby we get away from a reliance on sales tax and, and try to figure out sure. a better, because like uh, we have the highest sales tax in the nation, right? That's what I'm, well, and the highest state sales tax. The highest the state sales tax. That's correct. And then there's some other states that have no income tax. That's and they true. seem to be magnets for jobs and business. Well, but they have what they do is they, you know, like Florida, they've got tons of people there who are spending a lot of money and doing right. whatever. We have a poor state, right? Okay, and and what happens is, obviously, we need to encourage more businesses to come here. So that sales taxes, sales tax, I don't that affects them as much as business taxes. Mm -hmm. So we've done away with a lot of the business taxes right. to encourage them to come. Uh, you know, we've. I, but we're, comp I, we're competing against... If, if oil and gas comes back, that's, right. that's one thing. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, people talk about the motion picture industry, and we, maybe we're giving too much money to that. Mm -hmm. uh, believe me, if we pull that money, they're not going to go broke. They're just going to go to Georgia or Florida right. or California. Which so, is what they've done And, in the and it's not, you know, and I say this all the time, we don't get gift-wrapped issues, you know. Mm -hmm. you know or, or are you pro-life? Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. pro-life. Well, I never get that issue. I get, how, how pro-life are you? Are you willing to risk the loss of $300 million in Medicaid funds? Because right. you, your state won't fund abortion mm -hmm. in the case of, of rape and incest. So, you know, it's, it sounds real good in the paper. Mm -hmm. Everybody says, oh, fund tops. Okay, mm -hmm. good. I'll fund tops. What do you want me to cut? I don't care. You, you cut. And, that's, and look, I think TOPS is a great program mm -hmm. if we can afford it. And I but don't this think, year we have afforded it, right? Well, because that was one of the priorities that, that, that people had, and that's good. I'm, now, I'm I not, wouldn't be opposed to maybe start increasing the standards. Well, that's a discussion every year. Right. Uh, 
Uh, and you know, and everybody keeps saying you promise. I say, I know, I promise. I promised my kids I was going to take them out to Ruth right. Chris next weekend. But guess what? I lost my job, so we're eating hamburger. You know, that's right. that's the things you run into. You just gotta. You ha we we get we have to take the problems as they come. But the main thing we need to do is there needs to be a more cooperation among the Senate and the House and the governor. I always believe that the the, the obligation to fund the budget right. and to construct it is is by the three, it's not, here's the money, Governor, you make the cuts. Right. I think I think you got to roll your sleeves up and, and mm -hmm. see what's important based on our priorities. Senator Martini, thank you. Always it, a pleasure. It uh, was a, at least a successful ending, right? Well, well yes. you know, I've, I've had 24 years there, yeah. and this was just not the best. But right. you know what? This process is going to go on without right. me, and it's important that it, that it works. So I'm, I'm happy to, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm, it's bittersweet to leave next year, but uh in the same way, I know there'll be good people yeah. coming behind me. Yeah, so. well, and, you, and you've seen a lot of changes in those years. Yes. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. When we come back, we'll talk about what's going on, on the House side. Representative Kirk Taub will join us next, right here on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We just heard from State Senator Danny Martini. Let's get another perspective from State Representative Kirk Talbot, who's with us, also represents us right here in Jefferson Parish. Representative, how are you? Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for having me. So um, thank you for being here. So we, we heard from uh, Senator Martini and wanted to get a, a different perspective because obviously there are lots of ways to look at what's going on here. And um, we had a resolution uh, right. Seemingly, the special session uh, ended uh, early, and with a lot of support for this uh, compromise measure. What, what What are your thoughts about it? Well, I, I was disappointed. I, I voted against the the tax measure. You know, um, we have the largest budget in the history of the state. Um, it seems to be never enough. Uh, I believe a year ago, or, or nine or ten months ago, the governor said, "If we don't have 1.5 million dollars in new revenue, we're not going to have the SNAP program. We're not going to have." Uh, LSU football. We're going to kick uh, uh, elderly out of nursing homes. Uh, he got a little bit less than $500 million in, in revenue, in taxes, not revenue, in new taxes, and none of that is now true. So um, it, it is frustrating. Um, we're on a path, Jeff, where we will have to constantly raise taxes every year to keep up with the spending of this administration. Let's talk about that if we could, because uh, the budget has grown pretty significantly uh, since Katrina, yes. right? Uh, yes. I was visiting on my radio program with Senator Kennedy, and he was telling me, I mean, back then during uh, like 2005, I think our budget was $16 billion? Right. And now it's? 34. Really? Wow. Now, a lot of that, of course, is federal money. A lot of it is. And, and you know, LDH, the Louisiana Department of Health, will eclipse is on the trajectory to eclipse our pre-Katrina budgets just in and of itself. Right. That is, uh, that's a scary thought. That's a major part of this budget. So, um, 40 cents on every dollar we take in is going to, to LDH. In a state with, what, about 4.2 million people? Right. We got 1.6 million on, on Medicaid? Right. And uh, right. we've added 500,000 in, um, I, I guess, Edwards administration? Correct. I think that's right. And, you know, where are all the savings? You know, we heard, oh, this is going to save us so much money. Um, we certainly have not seen it. Mm -hmm. And again, in a couple of years when um, maybe it's 2020, when we're going to start having to pay it for our share of the Medicaid expansion is going to be north of $100 million, maybe more, even more than that. Mm -hmm. You know, where is that money going to come from? That's why we said, look, let's let's be fiscally prudent. Let's cut back. Let's start withholding. And, and, and start running an efficient ship because we know these expenses are coming. And, um, you know, right the now there haven't been any that. expenses for all this? Uh, not, not for our share. Okay. But, um, you know, when you look at, at, at what's coming down the pike and the way state government is growing more than the state GOP, GDP, which was 50th in the country for the last two years in 2016 and 2017, mm. um, state government is outgrowing the private sector. We are having out migration. We're one of the few states that have people that are leaving this state more than they're coming in. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're going to, you know, we're fighting over a quarter of a penny and a tenth of a penny. You know, if we keep going the way we're going, we're going to have 11, 12% sales tax because it's just never enough money. And 
you know, what state government does, they'll say, we need $100 million for our agency this year, even though they got $90 million last year. And if they only get 95, then that's a $5 million cut. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not a $5 million cut, but that seems to be the mentality in, in this uh, so uh, we had this uh, sales tax uh, measure. Um, have we looked at other sorts of ways to, to um, cut spending? I mean, to, to, to deal with this fiscal cliff you know, other than the taxes? We have, and to my chagrin, most of those have failed. You know, we talk about long-term care with the elderly, where we can take care of our elderly people at home. Um, that has been defeated in the legislature the last two or three years. That's at least $150 million savings. Um, the nursing home industry has fought that vehemently. Um, a, a lot of the legislators have fought that. That's something that can save us a ton of money. I wish the governor would get behind that. When he ran for office, he talked about, we got to treat our elderly better. Well, it's time to walk the walk, not just talk the talk and treat them better. There's ways that we can make sure that the right people are on Medicaid. We can look at, um, you know, are they fudging on their income? Are, are the right people being declared eligible? There may be savings hundreds of millions of dollars in that. We had bills to do that. Tony Bacala, Rick Edmonds had bills to do that where LDR, the Department of Revenue, would look and make sure that if you say you only make X amount, that you really only make that right. amount of money. Because we want the right people, the people who need it, to be on Medicare. All and those not measures that failed though, right? All those measures have failed and that could save a ton of money. We are one of the most generous states in, in qualifying people uh, to making people eligible for, the, for Medicaid. And you know, for example, if we use the same standards that Tennessee, I think it was Tennessee, uses, we would, I think, knock 40,000 people off the rolls. So, you know, we can't be that generous. We just don't have that kind of money. Mm -hmm. And plus, I don't think it's right. But, um, you know, all those things we could do. Uh, we had transparency measures, two of them, that were vetoed by the governor right. that shed more transparency on this budget. Um, the governor, I think, as recently as last year, did not say he wants to be the most transparent governor, said he is the most transparent governor in history, then why would you veto two bills that simply just show, show us some transparency on where this money's going? Let's talk about one of the measures I think that I had heard on my radio program was to have sort of this uh, Louisiana checkbook, which was, I guess, uh, similar to what Ohio had, right. where we are going to be able to see where every dollar is spent, everything's right. going to be transparent. As far as the budget, I, I, I thought that had passed. Uh, that did pass. I mean, it, it's, you know, all, it's all about funding and all about how much, uh, you know, uh, cooperation we're going to get. Um, you know, the governor did say he was for that, so I'm taking his word for it that he is and look forward to working with the administration on that and, and making sure that comes online and maybe that will shed some transparency. But right now, that's not online. It's got to be. I don't believe so. It's got to be built. It's got to be built. Yeah. And it is going to cost some money right. to implement that. That's not something you can just turn key overnight right. and do. But when it's done, people will be able it to see be. where our, our dollars are going. It's working in Ohio. Yeah. Also, of course, you know, we've, we've seen uh, reports come out. We've got the highest sales taxes uh, in the, uh, in the right. nation. Uh, you say we have the lowest uh, GDP growth for one of eight states to, you know, lose population. Right. So it seems to me that we need to have a fresh look at what we're doing to bring in business, to get Louisiana more economically competitive because right. we had Rick Scott coming here uh, poaching our business. Right. We've lost some headquarters to Texas in uh, recent right. months. Smoothie King. So what do you think we need to do to really make Louisiana a more competitive state? I, I asked Senator Martini this and he said, well, we're, you know, we're a poor state. It's hard to compete when we have so many people that are, uh, you know, on government services. Right. Um, it's not hard to fix our tort system. We have the worst tort system in the country. We have the highest, one mm -hmm. of the highest auto insurance rates in the country. People who move here from Alabama, Arkansas, from out of state, they get absolute sticker shock when they see how much auto insurance is. Not only that, you know, um, and, and that I believe is due to the tort system. What having that high rate of auto insurance has kept a class of people down. Um, when you don't have a car, when you can't drive, you're not as employable as someone who is. You're not as mobile. Maybe you can't shop at a cheaper store. Maybe you can't send your child to a better school. Maybe you can't have a better quality of life mm -hmm. with someone who has an automobile. So that is absolutely something that we can do. And that's something as chairman of the insurance committee, um, we're working on some legislation. We're going to take, take a hard look at that next year. We filed those bills a million times. Um, lowering the jury trial threshold, direct action, collateral source, all those things, we're way 
um, we're, we're not in line with what everybody else does. What's the insurance commissioner's uh, stance on some of these measures? Uh, Commissioner Donlin is 100% for it, and, okay. and we're working together, and he's always uh, been an advocate of trying to, to do something uh, in the positive side on mm -hmm. the tort system. What about some kind of tax reform, though, to get away from a reliance on sales taxes? When you give um, the, the, that side all the money they need, like we did in this session, there is no incentive for tax reform. So I would not look for any tax reform. Mm -hmm. That's the hook is, you know, we'll give you this, you give that. I mean, that's just the way things work up there. Right. And it's a shame of it is, Jeff, we have nothing to show for this tax increase and that's what it is it's not a revenue measure it's not a renewal right it's a tax increase and we have nothing to show for it nothing has changed nothing in the capital outlay system mm -hmm. all our bills have failed um the transparency bills i talked about mm -hmm. the tax reform um i wish the governor would get behind a constitutional convention i think it's finally time we need to take a hard look at that as well and that didn't pass, right? No. When there a, a bill to there was to to move that forward. There was, I believe, Neil Abramson had that bill. Right. So you sound like you're pretty frustrated. It is frustrating. Um, you know, we see um, our budget going up and up, and we just don't see anything mm -hmm. going forward. And then we getting forward, and then we see what's coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. And you know, we see how uh, other states that don't have an income tax that have a lower sales tax than us. How, you know, and they don't even have the Mississippi River running down the middle of it and all the oil and gas. You know, we have a governor that's encouraging parishes to sue oil companies and to chase jobs out of this state. That's the only way we're going to turn this around, Jeff, is a good job. And mm -hmm. that takes care of crime. Mm -hmm. That takes care of tax base. Mm -hmm. That takes care of a lot of things. We need good jobs here. Yeah, it helps keep families together. It does, and you know we have the mm -hmm. computer center I think coming into all, so that that is a positive right. thing. We have some stuff going on in in, uh, in Lake Charles, but um, there's and a the lot oil we gas industry do. is coming back a little, isn't it? It is, and you know uh, I believe the the REC the um, Revenue Estimating Conference has oil pegged at fifty nine dollars a barrel, right? And I think oil is at seventy to seventy five dollars. And um, look, we're going to have a surplus in this fiscal year. We did not need this much revenue. But we, when you look at the internet sales tax that's coming online, and you know, when that, when that story broke two days ago, guys like me and a lot of us were kind of waving the flag like, hey, wait a second, you know, maybe we don't need all this revenue, and what do we get out of the administration and the Secretary of Revenue? They threw cold water on it. Well, you know, we're not gonna get that money. It may take years to get that money. Yeah. Nancy Landry, a state rep from Lafayette, mm -hmm. bought an item on Wayfair, I believe it is yesterday, mm -hmm. and on her bill, it had, well, they're collecting Louisiana sales tax. Two days later, <laughs> after that Supreme Court ruling Didn't take came them out, long, right? I promise you, and I, and I love Kimberly Robinson, we work great together, I promise you she's working 60 hour weeks to make sure we get, and that is money we should get. Right. They should pay it, because we all pay it. So, but it's gonna lead to a surplus. But it's gonna lead to a surplus, and I think, um, I think things are turning around a little bit, slowly right. but surely in the state. Um, it seems like every, every time the REC meets, right. the revenue goes up, I mean look, we started out at 1.5 billion, then the governor said it was 1.2 billion, then it was 990 million, and then it was 800 and something million, and now it was 648, and now it's below 500. And we're still gonna have LSU football, we're still gonna have SNAP, we're still gonna have uh, old folks in nursing homes. So, you know, it, it was scare tactics, and mm -hmm. what's frustrating is all we hear from, from a lot from the administration mm -hmm. is the partisan style politics that right. Republicans practice. Well, that to me sounds like Washington style politics to me. Mm -hmm. And in, in our final 30 seconds, uh, as far as Jefferson Parish uh, issues, was there anything big uh, over these past few sessions that uh, really impacted well, I mean, the parish the most? You know, we always have uh, drainage issues. We always have um, infrastructure issues. And, and, you know, we need to look at how we do capital outlay. You know, we had some transparency bills so we can start prioritizing our money where right. it needs to be spent. Unfortunately, those failed. But, um, you know, we always have infrastructure and, and right. problems here. Yeah, and that's going to continue, obviously. It will. It All will. right, Representative, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we're going to turn the page and look at some good news stories in our local business world. That's next right here on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Time for some good news in our local business world. There were job gains in eight of Louisiana's nine metropolitan areas. It lifted the overall employment by 19,200 in May of this year compared to a year earlier. As a state, the job count topped 2 million, 
So that's very positive. The nearly 1% gain in non-farm jobs represented uh, the eighth straight over-the-year increase for uh, Louisiana. The highest unemployment level that we've seen since December of 2015, that's according to the Louisiana Workforce Commission. Gray Television Inc. and Raycom Media Inc. announced a major $3.6 billion merger that will create the third largest television broadcast group in the United States. Raycom owns WAFB, that's the CBS station in Baton Rouge, and WVUE, the New Orleans Fox affiliate. Advocates are hoping it'll make the television stations even stronger. And Shake Shack, which is the popular burger franchise, and also Cafe Du Monde, known worldwide for beignets. They're gonna open locations at the Louis Armstrong International Airport in the new terminal. It's expected to be completed in February of 2019. The airport says its goal is to develop an award-winning concessions program that celebrates New Orleans, appeals to both local and visiting passengers, and we look forward to that. Okay, folks, if you have any comments, questions, topics, guests, ideas, please contact me. It's jcruer at gmail.com, and always appreciate hearing from you. I'm Jeff Career, and I'll see you next time for another edition of Louisiana Business Spotlight.